Okay, we're to a, a sort of added on topic, but an important one, which has to do with uh, guesstimates and rules of thumb and so forth. So one of the things that policy analysts learn as they go along is that often you don't have to have the answer in all detail. You don't have to have the perfect model that sometimes guesstimates, rules of thumb, uh, and other heuristics are actually really good ways to advance a policy analyst. Tell me about that. What, what do we mean by those things? Uh, well, let's say, um, here's an example of, a, of, a, of, of social welfare. Friedman really likes to recommend that you do a kind of a needs assessment of some problem out there in the community. How much you know, is there a problem of poverty in a certain community? What's the extent? How about lead paint exposures in uh, low rent apartments? Uh, and so, you know, it would usually would be sort of nice to know how much of this is there. Often, though, we know enough so that you can get rolling without a very precise estimate. And you'll learn more about the real numbers as you go along and do the work. So, um, so for example, with that, you might say, we know lead paint wasn't used past a certain date. Uh, we could look at the vintage of the housing in that area. If it's modern housing, we maybe actually don't have to worry about lead paint. If it's old housing, then probably we do. We can figure out how many children live in those houses, and we can do an estimate of what right. the size of the problem might be. Exactly. And, you know, if your concern was, should we have a program in our unit at all, Right. then the answer is either yes or no. And you don't have to know the exact number. You just have to know, does it cross some threshold that you want to do this, or does it not? And if the number you come up with in the guesstimate is pretty far from the decision line, mm -hmm. then uh, you can be reasonable, uh, confident, you know, uh, confident enough for government work, as the joke goes. Right. Right. Uh, Sometimes not, and then actually you should do the more precise thing. And guesstimates are also important because in the popular press you'll see claims all the time. Uh, one of the most infamous ones was somebody who claimed there was something like two million heroin addicts in New York City. And somebody wrote an article about this and said that if there were two million heroin addicts in New York City, uh, this would have to lead to consequences that were not being observed, and therefore it was highly unlikely there were two million heroin addicts in New York City. Right. Sometimes just a little bit of a common sense check right. will do the job for you and you know makes your life as a policy person a lot easier. And in fact, one of the things I think policy analysts can often do is be that check. And when some media person says, there's half a million of X, and you say, well, wait a minute, could there possibly be half a million of X? Now, having said all this, I have to report that uh, that I'm embarked on a project with a collaborator to do computer simulation models of what could be complicated implementation processes because we think that uh, the, the discipline and the pr greater precision of a real computer model of something would be worth it, you know? Uh, but of course, once we've built all that, then other people can apply it, you know, cheaply. Right, and there are software packages on the web that actually allow you to do some things, you mentioned some in your book, and there are others, I think, being developed. So that kind of stuff can be very helpful in doing policy analysis. Let me ask just one final question, which is, tell me about the shortcomings. What are the shortcomings? Well, I've had the opportunity to think about this recently, as I'm sort of sitting with a future collaborator, Eric Potashnik, to do the next edition of the book. One thing that bothers me a lot is the design section. Uh, I, I don't think it gives advice that's needed in quite the right way. I think I, I can improve on it. Uh, so tell me about design. So we've been talking about policy problems, and now you're talking about design. What's the yeah, difference between... Yeah, this goes back to the alternative step, where you have right. to invent a new alternative and design it so that you can have better confidence that that's what you should do. Uh, so a design problem would be, how do I design a mix of schools to serve a community. That'd be a design problem. And a, 
Or just yeah, it would. Well, give me another example. I have so. another example, which is if you think that a cap and trade system for sulfur dioxide permits is a good way to manage this pollution problem, uh, it's hard to design this system. You know, people should be able to have property rights in it, but maybe not too much. Uh, the, what's the market price going to be? How would the trading work? Who's going to do this? Should the government take a little tax cut off of this? Mm -hmm. Where will the money, uh, who should get the revenues? Uh, if the government gets a chunk, you know, what should you spend it on? Well, how are we going to decide that? There's a lot to be decide designed. So it's like designing a new car or designing a building. There's, right. you, you start with a blank piece of paper and yeah. there's just a lot of possibilities. A lot of possibilities. And you got to figure out how somehow to cut through all those possibilities to get facets, something on paper. A lot of facets to the design. And they're interdependent. What you choose here, provisionally, is going to affect, constrain, or guide what you do on this other dimension, you know, three days from now. And when that's done, you're going to have to go back and say, I, I got to change my mind about the original one. You know, so it's a kind of a... So if you want a high-performance car with a gasoline engine, but you also want to be ecologically sensible, yeah. it may be a problem. So I, I, well, I feel we can say more than I said in the book mm -hmm. that's helpful about the problem, you know, I hope. Also, there's not quite enough about implementation and organizations and all that. It's more than I had, you know, in the second or third edition, but not as much as we hope to put into the next edition. For everything you put in, something has to be taken out because the book should be short. So we have to kind of cut and trim at the same time as we think about additions. So thank you. Um, this has been wonderful.